Welcome to GV247.TV, the Global Vision Channel. A non-profit web TV channel bringing biblical perspective to the world in which you live. Welcome to the Weekend Show with me, Deborah Menelos. And as promised, we'll be heading over to an interview with the guys in the Christian Motorcycle Association. Now you'll notice my beloved's not here. We're just recently back from Bovington Tank Museum in Dorset, England, where I was able to climb on board two of the World War II tanks that my young brother worked with as a special effects engineer on the feature film Fury with actor Brad Pitt. So that was quite exciting. Stuart will be here next week and I'm sure he'll share a few pics and video clips, but at present he's ever busy with a number of filming projects, one of which we do hope to be able to share with you in the coming weeks. Now this latest project will bring together a number of ministries, leading academics, professionals and testimonials that will indeed need much prayer support. So thank you for the emails received in regard to our last three programmes entitled Division in the Body of Christ, justice and mercy, and an aroma pleasing to God. We have received many grateful comments from around the world. So now, let's get to that interview. Hello and welcome to The Weekend Show. And as you can see, my beloved's not here, but I do have two beloved brothers in the Lord. And I have with me next to me, I have Mike Fitton, and he's the National Chairman UK of the Association of Christ no no Christian Motorcyclists Association UK is that correct? So you're national yes. chairman, mm -hmm. and I have John Hodge, and you're the editor of that group's magazine, which is called Chainlink, and you're also a pastor of a house church mm -hmm. and father and grandfather. Mm -hmm. Now, first of all. When you talk about motorcyclists, I suppose a lot of people will think of kind of outlaw gangs, Hells Angels and so on, that mm. kind of thing. Um, it, do you distinguish between the two? What exactly do you do about them? Yeah, well, one thing people need to know right away is that the motorcycle world is a very diverse group of people. Uh, for a start off, it's not just guys, as a lot of people think it is. It's men and women, but it also encompasses people from all ages. Uh, I love the fact that there are a lot of young children, some as young as five, uh, who do off-road or motocross or trial-style riding right through up to adult life. Um, obviously, those young ch kids can't ride bikes on the road, but they have opportunity through specialised clubs uh, to go and learn how to ride bikes safely, etc. Um, and then there are lots of diverse adult groups in the motorcycle world, again, off-road, people who tour, some people who simply ride a bike to go to work, others who will ride uh, trikes and custom bikes, Harleys, things of that nature. Um, but also those who love and have an absolute passion for road racing, circuit racing, and, and all that kind of thing. It, it's just a, a complete vast array of different groups and people. And yes, there are some people still who uh, are, are more toward the gang mentality, and uh, as far as we're concerned, we want to share the gospel with men and women and children and even, incidentally, retired motorcyclists. I love meeting up with people. In fact, there's one guy I can think of who is amongst the group I go and speak to twice a year and he's 92 years old and he still has a great passion for bikes, even though he doesn't specifically ride anymore. But it's an opportunity to share the love of God with people. Uh, in a way that often they wouldn't have an expectation for. And I have to say, if John or I or anybody in CMA was to take our motorcycle, park it in a marketplace or a town, you will have people come up and talk to us of all backgrounds mm -hmm. and reminisce about their experience. Mm -hmm. And just one friend, very quickly, if I may say, a, a wonderful old chap called Eric. When I worked for church, I used to go and visit him in his home. And the first time I went, I was eager to make a connection with this man. I really wanted to build a friendship with him, not in, with an ulterior motive, just because we loved each other's company. And as I was chatting to him, I noticed on the wall there was a black and white photograph of Eric sat astride a 500cc single cylinder, no suspension, army dispatch bike from the Second World War. And as soon as he found out that I rode motorcycles and I found out he was a dispatch rider, our friendship just bonded and we spoke about bikes most of the time whenever we met and I had the privilege of speaking at his funeral 
um, many years later. Uh, but it's incredible how riding a motorcycle, which is a tool to be able to connect with people and offer support and help, hope in the gospel. Now that's interesting because Stuart's dad was a dispatch rider in the war. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, excellent. and I think there's still an old photograph of him. So, what exactly is the CMA? Now you are now national chairman. Yes. Um, and you hand out these Bibles, Biker Bible. We actually had one in the studio anyway that yep. um, from one of our chaps who was associated with you. So tell us all about the CMA, or mm. tell the viewers. Well, to begin with, if I may just say that the Biker Bible is one of our many resources. Mm. And particularly this year uh, is a very exciting time for us because we actually launched the Biker Bible at the centenary of the Isle of Man TT, mm. which everybody I'm sure has heard of, uh, the greatest road racing island in the world. And thousands and thousands of people go every year. Um, and at the time when we were putting the Biker Bible together, we do it in partnership with Bibles for the Nations mission organization. Um, I actually had Christians, would you believe, say to me, why would a biker want a Bible, which I found incredible that a Christian would even put those words into a sentence. And I actually said to them that they don't want one, they need one because it's the word of life. Mm. And uh, we put these together. It's got 24 different colour testimonies, including my own, as it turns out, with the New Testament in contemporary English. And it just uh, is about motorcyclists from all over Europe, men and women, whose lives have been transformed by the love of God. And as we um, offer these, we don't just give them out uh, willy-nilly. We, we ask people um, if they've ever read the Biker Bible, if they've ever read the Bible or had an interest. And what most of them say is that if this is about people like me and they were bikers, then maybe this could happen to me, if you understand what I mean by that. Um, because they're real people with real stories. That's what a testament is about. Uh, and this year we have um, been rejoicing and thanking God that we've actually got to the point where we've given away nearly 100,000 copies of this in the 10 years since it was launched. Now that to some people may not be a vast amount, to us that's amazing. Mm. Because each Bible has the potential, I believe, of bringing a family of four to the Lord. And they have gone all over the place. It's just been remarkable. And so many people have come to us, really hardened bikers at some in some occasions, and said, this reminds me of when I went to Sunday school or to church or something of that nature. Um, and we have had people come into the ministry tents that we run at rallies and say things like, is there anything in the Bible for uh, an alcoholic? I had a guy come in on one occasion, a very sad situation where he sat at a table with a cup of tea. And I, I went across to, to listen to him, not to talk at him, as so often is the case with folks who want to share the Lord, they tend to speak more than they listen, which is a great shame. And this poor chap, his partner, had um, committed suicide only two or three days before, and he was very confused about it and had nobody to speak to. But he came to see CMA in our tent because he thought someone would listen. And we were able to offer him a biker Bible and, and uh, just, just a wonderful thing. The great thing about CMA as a whole is that CMA, we are here to share the gospel specifically, but not exclusively with bikers. In fact, I've often said we'll share the, we'll share the gospel with anybody who'll stand still long enough for us to be able to let them know that God loves them. Uh, and to share what scripture says. We never speak about our opinion, and we come from many different denominations, obviously all Christians, uh, and we never share what our denominational perspective is. We always want to share what the Word of God says because the Word of God is the one thing that will make the difference. And it's the truth. We know that to be the case for ourselves. And we engage with motorcyclists wherever we can in whatever circumstances we find them. Even if uh, somebody's broken down at the roadside, it's wonderful to be able to stop and offer assistance, um, offer to pray. It's amazing, actually. You know, A lot of Christians may think, well, I've never asked anybody, can I pray for you? But when we do that, more often than not, people say, well, actually, yes, I'd love you to pray. I've been told I've got an illness or my child is ill or my circumstances at home are not good or somebody's in debt or whatever. And it's 
great to be able to share with people in a way that, look, our God is alive. Mm-hmm. You know, it only occurred to me recently that, I mean, it's an obvious statement, but Christians, we are the only ones in the world that can actually say he is risen. Yeah. Christ is risen. All the people from other religions, um, we don't put them down, but to be able to speak to them about the fact that we are known and loved by the living God, that yeah. this isn't a, a religious ritual we go through. We know Christ personally, mm-hmm. and I particularly, particularly love sharing the gospel and the reality of Christ with people who have gone to church for years, mm-hmm. and that isn't a reality for them. They've gone and just gone through the motions. Mm-hmm. And it's so sad, but yet so wonderful when they realize that Christ died for them as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, if I may just say also that we find with the motorcycle world and not just people who come from the rough side of the world of motorcycling, that the perception church has given to them is that they're not good enough to go in the church, mm-hmm. that they aren't the sort of people who would be welcome or that the church would accept them. I've actually had people say that to me, and I think that's so, so sad, Mm. so sad. We, um, in fact, somebody I know once said, I would never go to that church because it's full of sinners. And my (laughs) attitude was, praise the Lord, it's full of sinners, because that's exactly where they need to be. It's just sad, very sad. But uh, yeah, we we go wherever we can. And another... uh um, I was going to say product, that's absolutely the wrong word. Another um, resource. material resource, thank you so much. Resource. Another resource that's used uh, is Chainlink magazine. Now, is this more a service to members of the association or tell us a little bit about it? Well, it's primarily to the members mm-hmm. and each member gets it, their own copy. But we produce extras which are distributed through the branches and made av- available um, for bikers in general and secondary and thirdly for anyone else who who we feel might benefit from Mm -hmm. from them Mm -hmm. and this is a very um, very striking logo you have on your shirts so tell us what does it say John without looking down what does it say (laughs) well it says um, the Christian Motorcyclists Association Association. that's a good that's a good guess and the other bit is Riding for the sun. Riding for the sun, the son of God. Yes. Mm -hmm. And another aspect of our theme, if you like, if I can just share with you, Debbie, is that we are reaching the world one heart at a time. Mm -hmm. Because we we don't want to be like hand grenade evangelists Mm -hmm. where we just go and throw a a grenade in. And and from that perspective, we want to work on a regular basis Mm -hmm. uh, for the long haul Mm -hmm. with individuals Mm -hmm. and uh, loving them into the kingdom of God. Now, when I first met you, we spoke about that you you told me, you know, about having a heart for the lost. And John, you said you had a heart for the found. I really get that. Mm -hmm. Could you just explain a little bit more to the viewers how that came about and, you know, how you met the the, the CMA and what you recognised was the need there, if you tell our viewers. Well, following my conversion to the Lord when I was six just before my seventh birthday Um, I went through a a period at uh, school where I struggled I was uh, a loner uh, very shy Um, however following my conversion um, and and it wasn't as um, half as great as Mike's conversion was because by the age of seven I hadn't committed any murders or (laughs) been a drug taker or an alcoholic so, so coming to know the Lord was, was a, a, lot, a lot gentler for me. But one thing I knew, I was saved. Yeah. I believed I was a child of God. And I remember in primary school on one occasion saying to the teacher, mm-hmm. Miss, I have two birthdays. Mm-hmm. And the look I had uh, from her was, uh, was as you would, would imagine. But I, was, I knew I had the assurance yes. Uh, I was the Lord's. Mm. Then in my uh, middle teenage years, when I was about 15, I remember distinctly uh, the Lord calling me. I was in uh, Belfast at uh, my uncle's house. We were staying there with with my brother Paul. And um, I was just spending some time with the Lord, uh, bottom of the bed, I was reading. And the Lord spoke to me through his word and and basically called me to, uh, to his service didn't realize what it was uh, until much later. 
when I was in my teens and the Lord um, grabbed me by the collar, if you like, and it was calling me into a pastoral role. Mm -hmm. And that's where, uh, following that, I, uh, I found my main thrust to be, which is ironic because I didn't get on very well with, with people. I was, as I said, I was a loner. I enjoyed my own company. And, and here was a, a calling that was going to be specifically dealing with people. Mm -hmm. So I, I shirked away from it, first of all, but then um, another event happened uh, later in my 20s and the Lord spoke to me very clearly, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. And this time I couldn't run. Mm. Um, and so um, as Mike's thrust is to the, uh, the lost, then I find my, my calling is to the found. As, and when I joined CMA, I found, I found members who were broken. Yeah. I found members who needed healing both physically and mentally mm. um, and I found a whole new mission field and I thought this is this is good yeah. um, this is good and I, I really felt that the Lord had, had placed me and my wife mm. uh, in this situation and we that's been uh, my thrust uh, partly through the uh, Chainlink magazine too mm -hmm. where I feel it's important to encourage to teach uh, and to to look after to pastor uh, the membership. I think one of the things that's impressed Stuart and I so much about these these lovely brothers is that they do have a passion for the word of God first, for mm. the Lord, for his word. Mm. And discipleship is very, very important. Yes. And regular viewers will know how important, how we're con constantly pushing that to make sure that you, if you're not already being discipled and you've never been discipled, you need to be discipled. So um, before we end, um, you have many other things that you do. What about Holy Joe's Cafe? Oh, Holy Joe's Cafe. Yes. It's one of the, uh, probably one of the main things we do. Uh, oh. Like I said before, we do go into lots of different other areas. But Holy Joe's Cafes is many, many years ago, probably 30 odd years ago now, uh, some of our people took uh, an average frame tent to a rally and uh, put a sign up saying that they would serve tea and coffee. <clears throat> and that they were Christians from the Christian Motorcyclists Association. Uh, but as a result of the fact that it said Christian on the sign, one person in the entire weekend went into this tent for a cuppa. But at, during the, one of the nights, one of the bikers, as a joke, took a pen and wrote on the wall of the tent, Holy Joe's Cafe. Now, at the time, it was decided that this was almost prophetic, let's say, and uh, the name stuck. And ever since, and incidentally, I'd love to meet the biker that wrote on it to be able to thank him. But uh, ever since, we have now developed an incredible ministry at motorcycle events, particularly rallies where people are there for the entire weekend, where we open with big marquees now, uh, selling tea and coffee at a, a high quality but low level price we have to charge. That's a requirement of the site. Uh, and we stay open 24 hours a day. We open Friday morning until uh, approximately midday on, on Sunday. And in that period of time, uh, everybody knows we are an overtly Christian organisation. We're there to share the gospel where possible. We're not there to judge. We are there to love and make people welcome. We're there to listen if they have difficulties in their lives and they want to talk. Or if they simply want to come into Holy Joe's with a takeaway to get out the sun or get out the rain, which is more often the case, to come and just meet with friends. It's not a problem at all. And um, now Holy Joe's reputation has grown to such a degree that literally we sometimes have a footfall in that uh, period of time of six or 7,000 bikers coming into our uh, Holy Joe's cafe. And I, I've said to so many pastors around the country, can you tell me of anywhere that you engage with not yet Christians, make that point very clearly, in a 48 hour period where there could be the better part of 6,000 people and they come knowing that we're Christians and we'll pray with them if they want us to. We'll offer them biker Bibles. There are tracks on the tables for them to read. Um, and incidentally, if I may just finish about Holy Joe's with one brief story. There was an occasion uh, a few years ago when we were at a rally and uh, somebody burst through the door 
holding a young man, a young man, um, a sort of a late teens biker by the scruff of his neck. This big burly biker brought him in up to the counter of Holy Joe's and then said to him, now listen, these are the people indicating CMA members that will be here for you when you've had too much to drink, you've fallen down in the mud or your tent's blown away. Do not make fun of them anymore. And then he threw him out of the tent and looked at us and put the thumbs up and said, thank you for all you do. And that to us was an incredible testimony. I trust, incidentally, the guy he brought in comes regularly now. I'm not quite sure. But it was an incredible testimony because that biker was saying, I acknowledge who you are, what you do, and you love us mm -hmm. unconditionally. Yes. And we're part of their culture. And it's, it's just a joy to do that. And that is what we're asked to do. So for those of you who've ever heard about the, the association, it's very clear that you're a mission. Yes. You go out into the world and you yes. go out into the, the motorcyclist world. And it actually began in America, didn't it? Yes. Um, a few years before it became over here. And it's a, it, that's a wonderful story too. But um, I think we're just about out of time. Now, if somebody was to want one of these biker Bibles to give to somebody that they know in the biking yes. fraternity, what would you suggest they do? Should they contact a local association or...? Well, we're in 40 countries around the world. Mm -hmm. And incidentally, a third of our members are women, which I'm not sure I mentioned that. Mm -hmm. It's a vitally important part mm -hmm. of our ministry. Um, if they are connected with the UK, mm -hmm. they can go on to www.bike.org.uk that's our right. website okay. but if you were to look for Christian Motorcyclists Association on the on the internet I'm sure if you're in America it's huge they've got mm -hmm. lots mm -hmm. of connections there and also on the, the American website it has a list of all the countries involved as well mm -hmm. the international page so people can connect with us or just get in touch with me via the, the bike.org.uk yeah. mm -hmm. um, contact uh, page and we will ensure that somebody gets it. Uh, and they're obviously in, in many, many different languages now um, as a biker Great. Bible. That's wonderful. Thank you very much, Mike Fitton, John Hodge. It's Absolutely been such privilege. a joy to meet you. Thank you, thank you, folks, for tuning in again this week. And as usual, we do thank you for your emails. We thank you for your messages of encouragement. So please tune in again next week. I think Beloved will be back with me. And um, make sure that you check out the Signs of the Times website, the, the Facebook, and keep an eye on what is happening out there. The Lord is coming back soon. Amen. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Well, that was really encouraging. Once again, we're out of time. So here's a quick reminder to join our brothers and sisters over on Channel 2 to continue our Round the Kitchen Table Bible study using the Lamplight Study Guide. Programme Section 5, Part 13 from the Old Testament will be coming this Monday. And yet again, we'd like to encourage you to help share the Global Vision Channel. And remember, you can get your GV24-7 cards from us in packs of 40. So a big thank you again for CMA Chairman Mike Fitton and their magazine editor, John Hodge, for taking the time to tell us about the ministry. And when we have a chance, we're going to be sharing their testimonies at some point. Also, John Mackay from the Creation Research Institute is sending over Dr. Diane Eager to Scotland and she's going to be dropping into the studio for a chat. Now, she's a really interesting lady whose speciality is in the medical sciences and God's amazing creation. So we look forward to that. But until next week, hold fast to that which is just and true. God bless. This is GV247.TV, bringing biblical perspective to the world in which you live. A powerful free resource with hundreds of short films on a wide range of Bible topics from experts around the world, plus full-length sermons and programs for teaching and encouragement. Choose from current affairs, signs of the times, a chance to voice your own opinion and special offers on our full-length feature films, documentaries, and study materials. At over four hours in length, The Lamplight Project is a systematic 12-part Bible study series, a powerful teaching tool that begins with the origins of life and takes the viewer on a comprehensive journey packed with high-profile interviews, film, graphics, and illustrations, concluding with the return of Christ and an encouragement to stand firm and be faithful. Complete with a free study guide download for both personal and group study, 
This powerful interactive guide connects to over a thousand programs with expert interviews on GV247.tv, our free service web TV channel. Does My Life Have Meaning? A powerful one-hour presentation produced from the Lamplight Project. With a free copy of the Gospel of Luke, this film is crammed with engaging interviews, film and graphics. A life-challenging film to those searching for answers. As distributors for the Jesus film, we offer this timeless movie based on Luke's Gospel. This clear presentation of the life of Jesus Christ has been viewed worldwide and translated into over 1,200 languages. We provide the film with a free copy of the Gospel of Luke. The Daniel Project is a popular TV documentary that presents an overview of Bible prophecy and an encouragement to read the signs of the times. Hailed as one of the best TV films to be made on the subject, DVD extras feature a heart-to-heart -heart interview about the way of rescue. Based loosely on the documentary, The Daniel Connection is a full-length feature film. This fictional thriller incorporates many of the themes promoted through pop culture and social media which affect people on a global scale. Launched at the Cannes Film Festival, The Daniel Connection points the ever-skeptical viewer to search the Bible for answers to life's deepest questions. We've been serving the body of Christ for over 30 years, and if you would like further information, please do not hesitate to get in touch. <laughs>